In the last video, we did an advanced video where we talked about the fact that the life history or the reproductive strategies of organisms sometimes depends on the survivorship of these organisms and the kinds of environments that they live. And there's another way to talk about this and that's been historically used in biology, which is talking about R versus K selection. Now, this is in parallel to the ideas of ITR parity and semi parity that we talked about before, but it's slightly different. And I wanted to present this to you because it could show up, you know, in tests and things like that that you're going to have to take. And this is actually a theory that's been abandoned pretty much in biology because we now understand that animals are not one or the other, but they actually live in a balance between the two tragedies. But I wanted to, to point out that it does kind of make sense to see that in certain conditions, one strategy is going to be better than other in order to survive. Let's take, for example, of cockroaches that live the way they live, right? They will have usually short lifespans and they will have very short developmental periods. That means they will have very few days before they reach sexual maturity. And they will have a very short time between reproductive encounters. If they have more than one, it will be very small, small time. That means they can have babies today and then a week from now they could have more if they have more than one. They also tend to reproduce more over a short period of time. So they have more reproductive encounters and typically each reproductive encounter makes many, many offspring for which they care very, very little. And typically because of all these things, they have usually smaller size as well. And because they're not caring for their offspring, they probably will have less of this offspring actually survive. So the number that actually survive, the, the survivability of the offspring is very, very low. So what this situation is going to be then, that this kind of strategy will make the, reprodu the production rate be extremely high. And we call those species our selected species. Because remember, in the formula for population grow, R stands for reproductive rate. So these are species with focus on maximizing reproduction. Because think about it, having a shorter lifespan with less developmental periods, with more uh, reproductive encounters very often, with a lot of children per reproductive encounter, what you're doing there is you're trying to maximize the shortness of the life cycle to the, at the expense of the energy to maximize the number of offspring. And if you live like that, the populations will explode very often. You have very great shifts in the population. You're going to see the population going fast a lot and then all of a sudden crashing against the carrying capacity and then dumping again. And then and the cycle will repeat itself. And that's the line you see over here where the population grows almost exponentially, but then it's too, too, so many of them will die off that you're going to go back to the beginning. This kind of strategy is going to be common in places where the environment is unpredictable and the organisms are under constant predation or in a very harsh environment they're very unlikely to survive for a very long time for example in succession the pioneer species were going to be the first ones to come through and they have to live in a harsh environment where their chances of survival are very very low so it's advantageous for them to have thousands of offspring and have very short lifespans and making sure that each offspring will have a small chance of survival but since you have thousands of them chances are at least a few of them will survive so they will tend to do better in situations where the population density is not very high and then they're going to have a chance to explode and vary a lot because of that on the contrast if you think of something like a elephant for example that it has a very large size and a very long lifespan and a long developmental period is going to take a long time to reach sexual maturity and it will have very long gestation periods as well very few reproductive encounters over a lifetime or over a long period of time and very few offspring per reproductive encounter but it will care extensively for the offspring and spend a lot of energy caring for the offspring and that means that the offspring will have a higher chance of survival but you have less offspring so in this situation it's going to be better if the environment is more stable and there's less opportunity to grow the population. In other words, when you are actually close to the carrying capacity already, when the population is at the situation where you are already in the balance, in the equilibrium of, the, of being close to the carrying capacity. In those situations, it's better to make an offspring that has a higher chance of survival and better, going to be better at competing with others for, for those resources which are now in a, in a high population density, you're going to be, have to fight for. So it's better to be more invested, more technical, larger size, and all those things. So while the case selection is going to be better for established habitats, which are in balance and close to carrying capacity with high population densities, and where focus is on competition, the R selection is going to be better for disturbed habitats, where great fluctuations and, comp and, and instability is the norm. 
and the population can grow up and down all very suddenly because there's so many things happening that could destroy the population numbers. So both strategies have their pros and cons, and it's life forms make it in one way or the other. Now, some life forms will actually live somewhere in between. Think of a plant, for example. Uh, a typical plant will have a lot of seeds per, per time that it produces. But does that make it an arc selection or case selection? Well, if you consider the size of most trees, for example, if you consider the, the amount of investment and energy that it takes them to get to the point that they will be ready to reproduce, then it's, there's like a balance between the two of them. There's not really one or the other. And what about bunnies, for example, which are typically mammals? So in a way, they would be typically more case-selected. But since they're under constant pressure for the environment and the chances of their survival are very low, they tend to have a little bit higher reproductive rates and actually have shorter periods between reproductive encounters and have a lot more offspring than the typical mammal will have. So this means that no organism is really going to be case-selected or are selected, that there's a balance between the two of them and that it's really a, a more of a construct that we use to understand that in general animals will vary the reproductive strategy depending on the kind of environment that they or the kind of pressures that they're under that in certain circumstances it's better to focus on reproducing in large numbers in other circumstances it's better to focus on beating the competition and making sure that each one actually survives and spending more care on your life to actually maximize the chances of the few offspring that you're actually going to have in an environment that already has a lot of people living in it but it's stable that offspring will survive so whichever way you look at it this is R versus K selection and the best way to think of it is to compare the strategies and the features of each one of them and to see that but remember that animals will live in a balance between one extreme and the other and a lot of organisms actually are somewhere in between it's more like a spectrum where it's not really like you, you, a categorical when you're going to be one or the other it's more like you can be a mixture of both all right i hope that's clear and in the next video we're going to talk about human population growth patterns across history very important topic i'll see you guys then